hello am i audible in the back yes, yes excellent so i think when the parallel sessions are going on one of the challenges you know how to get an audience i need i need to come up with a strategy to do that uh my name is satnam and uh, i'm going to talk about anomaly detection how many of you have listened to word anomaly detection all right i think i'm going to have a good time so uh, anomaly detection i don't need i don't think i need to do a marketing pitch here uh, it's a well prominent problem in credit card fraud detection in it infrastructure area and you know in uh, complex uh, systems such as automobile chemical industry you name it you know and you will encounter this problem so i am going to focus more on a uh, it infrastructure area and the it infrastructure area you you can imagine that you know here is uh, well uh, it admin a cute little boy and here you know he's looking at the dashboard and there are hundreds of thousands of streams going in the back backdrop and you need to detect anomalies or you know need to do a health monitoring of it and if there is any severe issues in you know, a bring out to the attention of it admin now uh, i'm showing a three different uh, streams here uh, and the objective of showing these three different streams is that uh, you know the complexity of each data stream is going to be different you know what you are really looking at the data which is a very fast time scale data and also uh, each stream may be you know simple or very complex it may have a seasonality it may not have a seasonality and so on uh, the key message i want to say is you know if we come up with a heavy hammer of a deep learning you know we don't need to apply a deep learning problem for this guy right so when we choose a machine learning algorithm let's choose it appropriately for appropriate data stream that's the message number 1 now uh, let me fix the ideas here you know the way we are approaching the problem what we are saying is broadly speaking there are two kind of anomalies uh one is a local anomaly and the another one is a global anomaly uh what do you mean by local anomaly is like you know you are looking at time scale which is you know in seconds or minutes and you need to make a decision on that that he is there an anomaly there so here is a very simple representation of that you know i have a cpu on the y axis it could be any metric cpu memory response time or any other metric uh and looking at the univariate here uh when we look at you know in kind of a sort of a hawk's eye uh you basically i don't know whether hawk can do that but at least a human can do it uh you know you assume in your mind that here is a baseline and with respect to the baseline there is a significant departure and that's the reason there is a anomaly there so if we are talking about a very short time scale i am or actually we are naming it as a local anomaly now but when we are looking at hourly scale or a monthly scale or you know a weekly scale there is a seasonality in the data then we are calling it as a global anomaly so that's a typical example in a sort of e-commerce traffic where every tuesday it goes up high but in certain tuesday it doesn't go up then you know you raise an alarm or you raise an anomaly there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show some uh videos for local anomaly and a global anomaly and then i will go deeper into it so what it shows uh, is a local anomaly plot uh, you know imagine that you know you have a data streaming uh, happening you know there is a whole bunch of data coming in and we are learning um, for every first uh, every 100 samples or so 
and with respect to this space line you kind of trigger the alarm and then you know you again move your window in a sliding window manner and then you again uh, detect that hey did uh, the distribution of the data which is coming in is it significantly different then you again raise an alarm and these alarms or you know anomalies I am kind of interchangeably using it. Uh, now but I, you, if you notice here I am also marking you know some of them as a blue ones. Now what do I mean by that you know they, they could they are something like you know false positive. Now in this case I am able to say that because I have a ground truth and that is a challenge in anomaly detection problem that you know where you set your threshold you know should I put it up or way down and there will be always a trade off between you know false positives and a misdetection. Now uh, the key message here is we are looking at in a shorter time scale and another thing is uh, which uh, in every hundred uh, samples or so we learn the baseline and then we apply to the next baseline. So the idea here is that you know can, how can we make and you know learn our models in the real time and you know keep applying it as the data arrives. So this was a model of a local anomaly and now I have a model of sort of a example of a global anomalies. So the local anomalies have done its job but the global anomalies now figures out that you know there is a seasonality in the data and it says that oh there are these anomalies you know these should not be there so it suppresses that. And this guy here is actually not it's a, it's a significant departure from the global model. So there is actually uh, anomaly there. Now what you see down here is another example that the local detection actually is saying that there is there should be anomalies but you know the global model is actually you know suppressing it. So these are kind of toy examples to give the ideas uh, and uh, what both of these examples actually illustrate that we have a combinations of local anomalies and a global anomalies and um, we need to have a fusion of all these models to really give uh, a meaningful anomalies in the end. So All right. So, uh, what's the uh, what's the underlying anomaly detection pipeline here? So the pipeline here is we first you know do the data pre-processing or you know any kind of a feature extraction and those kind of things, and and the one I was saying that you know you need to also estimate uh, the complexity of the data stream. And we figure out that you pick up the right hammer for the right data stream. After that we do a local anomaly detection. Uh, once we do a local anomaly we perform the global anomaly detection to figure out if there is any seasonality in the data then uh, use that knowledge to further suppress or generate anomalies. And in the end we do anomaly suppression and fusion. And the key idea there is that you know, if you are getting lots of anomalies you do not need to send alert for each anomaly and the example is you know if you have uh, 100 anomalies in 10 minutes you do not want to send 100 emails. So you just send a one email uh, for that set of anomalies. So let us go uh, you know little deeper uh, here of course I think uh, since lots of uh, uh, people here are aware of uh, unsupervised machine learning and also about the anomaly detection. I think uh, some of these uh, techniques you guys have used uh, in your applications like one class SVM, kernel density estimator and parametric models and so on. Uh, what I would get deeper into the pages test uh, that will be my you know next slide here. Uh, over here I just want to give a message that uh, a typical way people kind of say that hey I'm going to say anomaly something is I first fit a parametric model you know it could be log normal could be Poisson or could be gamma distribution or some distribution you pick up you validate that 
and then you say that, hey, is that point uh, too far away from that distribution? You compute the probability, and, and you compute actually a log of that, and then you compute with some kind of a scoring mechanism that, hey, this is too far, so I'm going to declare as an anomaly. Or if you don't even go in that far, you can actually come up and say that, hey, I'm going to do plus minus three sigma. That has been there in 1960s. You know, people have been using it. But I think what kind of problem we are looking at is we want to make sure that we do more robust anomaly detection. And then also, we are able to uh, detect different type of local anomalies. So one specific type, I will go deeper. And that one is, uh, I'm going to show that type first. That type of anomaly detection is more when the baseline actually gets shifted. So in the time horizon, actually, this was a, for a few hours, this baseline got shifted. And the key challenge there was that you just want to detect the shift in the baseline. You don't want to keep saying that you know, these all are anomalies. So how do we figure out you know, this change detection? So this change detection uh, problem, we go back and you know, pick up one of the fundamental uh, theory. In change detection theory, there is something called pages, pages test, and we modified that. Uh, so let me first give a, you know underlying concept of pages test. It's all about you know, coming up with a statistic which is, uh, which is uh, tracking the change in the process. And this signal is actually embedded in the noise. And you kind of hypothesize as a binary hypothesis problem. And not only you know, one change point, but it could be a whole bunch of change points. And uh, when this log likelihood ratio of uh, this alternative hypothesis to the null hypothesis crosses certain threshold, and you kind of raise an alarm. Now, the, the beauty of this uh, algorithm is that you know, there is no assumption on what PDF you should really pick up. You, know, you can pick up any one. And you know, as long as you, know, you are coming up with a, some kind of a closed form, and even, even if you are not able to do a closed form, you can actually solve that. So I have solved that you know, in uh, various uh, domains where actually these probabilities were coming from hidden Markov model, and you know, we were doing uh, you know, detection of some suspicious activities. So uh, the message is that you know, when we apply this kind of uh, change detection techniques, you can, do a, you can declare a detection, and then you, you don't need to say that, hey, that everything here is actually anomaly. You can see here the anomaly is only the first few points where you have declared the, the change and you have detected the change. Now that was about the local anomalies. You know, there were a whole bunch of other techniques. You know, I'm not going to go deeper into it, but you know, feel free to have a dialogue with me after, the, after my talk. Uh, I'm going to give a flavor of uh, the global anomaly detection. I um, think couldn't find time to make a nice PPT, just hand drawn it. So here the idea is that you, know, you have a sort of a real-time data coming in, and you, know, you want to detect the periodicity, and you want to detect some kind of a seasonality out of it. And in order to do that, of course, you need to do downsample it, and that's where you know, the downsampler is over there. And you kind of make different kind of models. You make hourly model, you make you know, daily model, and so on. And um, you know, the underlying models could be anything, you know, could be your ERMA, ERIMA, or whatever is, you know, uh, favorite uh, Carmel filter, you know, the way you want to formulate. Uh, and then, you know, you store those models, and, when, the, and when, the, when you want to predict, use those models to, you know, predict on them and, you know, raise uh, anomalies, either generate anomalies which are using the seasonality in the data, or you suppress anomalies. So ultimately, you know, what you get is you know, anomalies, but you, know, you don't need to send alert for each one of them. So you kind of uh, uh, do a control over there and give only a population of uh, anomalies 
to the IT admin. So what I just talked about, I think uh, the key message is um, in these uh, IT infrastructure domain, what we have seen is that if we use a combination of techniques, which some of them are looking at more at a faster time scale, and some of them are looking at more at a slower time scale, and then you know when you fuse their results, you get a better outcome on that. That's the one message. And the second message is uh, you don't need to raise alerts for each anomaly. So that's more of a domain knowledge. You know, how do you bring the business or a domain knowledge and you know cook that back into the system? And there also, you know, one key input could be that you know if you are able to get uh, something out of the IT admin that he is doing an action on it, you can further take it and do a, some kind of a Bayesian formulation of it. And uh, you can further tweak your thresholds to give you know uh, lower false alarms and you know better detection accuracies. Uh, uh, and last but not least, uh, you know there is a, there are a lot of nuances in doing a tweaking of hyperparameters and the thresholding techniques and so on. So there, you know, if you don't have a ground truth data. Uh, what our experience is that use multiple techniques and use you know few of them as a lower bound and few of them as kind of an upper bound and then see you know where your system is behaving um, i think uh, yeah last but not least i'm very a lot of thanks to my colleagues uh, and you know my team members here nitin ashish roshni chaitanya they all are here and uh, my mentor raj um, think open for our questions. Hello, uh, I'm here. Okay. Hi. Sure. Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, I'm uh, curious: uh, is this uh, in production, and what is the impact it had on the ops team? Has the headcount reduced? Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so this is a product which we are building, and uh, we we kind of uh, did the internal testing on in the data set which is get generated on the mainframe and all that. So we did a testing on that, and so our results are pretty good on that. We haven't shipped it yet. We just have time for one more question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in uh, problems, uh, I have worked on the single variate uh, anomaly detection is kind of easy. But when you multivariate anomaly detection becomes difficult, the interaction between the variables. Uh, so those are more subtle anomalies, which sort of we, we, we are not able to see with the simple statistics. And uh, have, have you worked on something like this? And how do you come up with like probability distributions, multivariate probability distributions? through which you can calculate log likelihood and say that a particular point is an anomaly. Right, so I think uh, we, we went in this way first. The reason for that is, you know, uh, it's not about, uh, I'll, I'll definitely make a comment on the multivariate as well. Uh, we took this one first because we need to, you know, give a interpretable results to the IT analyst. So, you know, they wanted to have some deeper insight, you know, when you are saying alarm or when you are saying alert, what, do you, what does it mean? Now, if I, you know, I can, uh, I mean, the team, data science team can, you know, figure out that, hey, we can take the whole bunch of variables, you know, do a PC on it or, you know, even do a robust PC or whatever, you know, we can pick up the state of the art to really figure out that, you know, which features to take and then, you know, do a detection on that. But ultimate outcome was that, you know, there is something what analysts want is, or the admins want is that something which they can also interpret. So, uh, and that was the sort of a, so you can think of like, you know, this is the sort of a minimum viable product requirement. So, uh, and you know, feel free to connect with me. I can, you know, give you a lot more insights on a multivariate. Thank you, Sadna.